Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Some of you know I've been working my butt off to do an investigation into the Kylie Rodney case for over a year, close to a year and a half of my life. I put into this quest for truth and I've invested so much of myself into it and my own time and my own money that I just can't give up on it. And getting closer to the truth makes me feel a bit better about the whole thing. So I wanna help you guys get a little bit closer to the truth today. This will be my second theory on how Kylie ended up in the lake with her car. And the first one I did was in an audio podcast I did. You can watch those and listen to those for free right here on my channel. Just hit the subscribe button and join me on my quest for truth. You get to follow along, you get to see what I'm doing, and you get to even take part in the things that we're doing. So I'm glad to have you here, but it's time to talk about how Kylie ended up in the lake. Again, I gave one theory a while ago. I call it my salvia theory, and it fits into the things like Mags Larson talking about these boys that were trying to get them to take bong tokes the second they got to the party. You can go listen to my podcast if you're interested in that. But today's theory is much more direct, much more to the point, in some ways much more simple. And like the police do when they want to get to know somebody that they don't know, they start asking the people around them, what are they like? You know, what would they do in this situation? Um, they ask them what kind of frame of mind were they in? Were they, were they happy? Were they having, going through a divorce? Was there something wrong? Um, were they upset about anything? You know, this kind of thing. And they ask many people and they read and take multiple statements. And then they get a better idea of who this person is that they're investigating. And that way they know, hey, it's very likely this is what happened based on what we know about this person from all the people around that person. Okay, so some of you know I've been talking to Kylie's family directly and I have not been pushy or asked any questions. I've just been inquiring about things that anybody could really inquire about, but also building a bit of rapport at the same time so that I can maybe ask more prudent questions a bit later. So some of you know I'm working on that and I have gotten little tidbits like I was just talking with David Robertson recently, Kylie's grandfather, about the lodge and I was asking why is the Lost Trail Lodge closed for the winter? You guys are usually open for skiing and he replied to me about a couple of things and in there he did reply to that as well. He simply said that we just needed a break and it's their off season anyway so they said uh, he, he said that they'll be open again in the in the summer um, but yeah I have like here's the email right here I'll just post it up here for a second um, that's where he said that they're just taking a little break so they're not closing up they're not selling the place they'll be open in the summer um, so there's that but when I've been talking to the people that are closer to Kylie I've been learning more about Kylie and I'm starting to get a much better feel for who she is and how that may have affected what happened. There are a lot of statements made by people like Kylie's family that no one reviewed. They said a lot of things to mainstream media and they got overlooked and nobody really dug into them. I have spent more hours reading people's statements and stuff like from Kylie's family than anybody else. I'm pretty sure I can say that with confidence. So that helps me build a much clearer picture in my mind of who Kylie Rodney actually was. 
And after hearing her friend's statement where she was talking about Kylie and how much she looked up to Kylie, the things she said really made me think about what Kylie might have been up to that night and how things might have gone down and how that may play into how she ended up in the lake with her car. Okay, so many of you know we had private investigators and other people working as a team and I don't even live in the same country. I'm not even in the United States. So we got photographs that you never saw before. I showed them in my past videos of the imprints that this car left in the mud. Uh, one day after the water receded, we got those photos and we're the only ones to have ever taken those photos. I don't even think the police have those photos because they didn't come back two weeks later and watch the water like daily until they were able to see the marks. And that's what we got were those photos for you. And I showed them to you in the Kylie Rodney story, chapter one, which we talked about the impossible. The fact that she drove down there by mistake, drunk or sober and accidentally crashed into the lake. Well, like I said, as I get to know this girl, Kylie, a little bit better, it sure seems to me that there's another possibility that was overlooked and needs to be examined or at least brought up at this time. Because you can't go accusing anybody of anything without any evidence. And until I have police reports and all those Freedom of Information Act requests come back, we don't get to accuse anybody of anything. And I can't line up their evidence with what I have and the stuff I've worked on for a year and a half until I have all of it. So if you're going to throw wild theories around, it's not a very good idea to do that before you get all the information. That's not smart at all. So if you want to do something like get the story right in the Kylie Rodney case, you have to get all the information and let everyone tell their side of the story and prove it. Show evidence that backs up their claims. It's as simple as that. And the police should be able to do a better job of that than anybody because they have all the evidence they have all the photos the videos the statements all sorts of things police reports I'm getting all of that stuff for you guys you know I am you're watching me do it some of you hang out with me on my channel and help me do it we're working on the emails and sending stuff to the police and talking to them and we were Four days away from getting the names of all the police officers that were driving the boats around in the lake that didn't find Kylie. Yeah, they agreed to give them to me. And then four days before they gave them to me, they changed their mind and said, you'll have to take it up with Nevada County Sheriff's. And that's because, just like I said would happen, there's a whole bunch of BS going on the internet. If you think the police are not watching people on the internet, you'd be wrong. They are real detectives. They are real cops. They are not stupid. They know who I am. I'm sure they checked me out and stuff before they agreed to give me the information. And now something changed. And the only thing that changed is a certain somebody making up wild, crazy conspiracies that are just way out there. And even if he wants to believe that stuff, why would you even talk about stuff that you can't prove without even bothering to go get the proof and evidence? That doesn't make any sense. If you want to go get the story you're gonna have to get it from the police now if the police tell a story and show me things that don't add up and don't line up with what I do know that's a whole different story but I have been straight up and transparent with you all on that whole thing 
And I've shown you that so far the Placer County Sheriff's Office are the ones telling the truth. Now, they were going to give me more info. They were going to give me the names of all the people driving the boats around. Didn't you guys want those names? Wasn't the whole idea of this quest to get the truth? I just about had those names for you. We were four days away from that before an internet storm of BS started up. And now it's like, oh, so now they're clamming up. I see exactly what I said would happen. Now I have to circle back around later and be more assertive, which I didn't ever want to do. They were going to give me the names. Now I have to go to them and say, look, you have to give them to me. It's the law, and I got some people behind me that deserve and want the truth. I'm going to put in the request again. I don't take no for an answer, guys. You know that. I'm putting in the request again, but not right now. No, because we're going to go to Nevada County Sheriff's Office and finish our inquiries and Freedom of Information Act requests and get the solid answers to some questions that need to be addressed, such as the seatbelt issue. I'm working on that right now. In fact, you guys know that have been with me for a while and on my channel, you guys know we sent the email together where I sent them straight up the eight deadly questions. The questions that we all want answered in the Kylie Rodney case, the really tough ones like the seatbelt thing. You guys saw me. I sent them photos of what we have, measurements and stuff that we know that maybe they don't even have to show them that they have to at least take us seriously. And they did. And they realized that, hey, we're doing something positive and trying to get the story straight for the public that have been lied to. And I even told them, you know, we're just trying to get the story straight because 5 million plus people watched the Adventures with Purpose video and they don't know what to think. And that's why these crazy stories and questions will come up forever until we finish our documentary and clear the air. And we refuse to speak for anyone or any family or any police agency without the facts. So we need you to speak on these things. And it worked and we had them talking and communicating. And now it's like, no, you're done here. We gave you what we could give you. Bye bye. Everything is done at Nevada County Sheriff's Office because they were the lead investigation team and we will not speak for them. And it's like, okay. All right, I'll go talk to them. That's what we're doing anyways. It's already in motion. You guys know I've already done it. It's in motion. But I can't do anything about the fact that we just about had the list of names and now we got to come back later. I will come back later. I will ask again. I will put in the request again. I will be more assertive and say, we can't have a no. This is definitely a yes. You have to give it to us because we know you have it and it's the law. So that's how that's going to go. Hopefully I can use my rapport I built up with the Placer County Sheriff's Office with your help to maybe get that to go smoothly okay but certain somebody's on the internet are purposely trying to make that hard and ruin our chances of getting truth and that really ticks me off so we're gonna move on all right we're gonna carry on with our quest for truth and again if you're just joining us here for the first time hit the subscribe button set the notifications to all and then I can keep you updated on real things that are going on in this case and I'm gonna talk about some other cases and what I'm gonna be doing with my sponsorship with Holy Stone Drone Company that's coming up too. some of you guys know about that already because I did a video a while ago we'll talk about that more in the future but today everybody wants to hear my theory my second theory on what happened to Kylie, how she ended up in the lake. And I'm going to tell you that right now. And I'm also going to share a little tidbit with you of information that I've been putting together from 
statements from Kylie's family and from her friend that has helped me start to build that picture of who Kylie Rodney was as a person and how that affects what might have been going on and going through her head and what might have transpired that evening when she lost her life. Okay, so here we go. Multiple statements from people, including the one I showed you just recently, I'll put this one back up on the screen, from David Robertson, where he said things about Kylie, such as, she was a good driver, she knew that area very well, she was always down there, and not afraid to go down there. Listen to what he's saying. Not afraid to go down there. And she had her own snowmobile. She had her own snowmobile. And that's another thing. People are saying that her family didn't care about her and stuff. Um, that's not what I'm finding at all. Not even close. She had nice clothes. She had braces when she needed them. That's expensive. She had surgery on her wrist and a wrist plate put in and also the proper casts and stuff for it to care for it afterwards so it would heal properly. That's expensive and that's something that parents don't do if they don't give a crap about their kid. Um, she had, you know, uh, if she did own that Honda CRV, and you know I have a private investigator working on it, if she did, that's a nice car. It was sold for just over $23,000, and we know that for a fact. I already showed you the documents. So, she had a nice car, nice phone, nice clothes, proper dental care, uh, proper health care for her wrist that was very, ex very expensive. Um, she had her own snowmobile. Apparently, she was a really fun girl. All right. Everybody says she was a really fun person to be around and she just lived on the edge. She was a fun person. She liked to take risks is what I'm getting. And even if you listen to David Robertson's comment here about she had her own snowmobile, she wasn't afraid to go down there. I'm getting a lot of that. She wasn't afraid stuff. It's all over appears that Kylie was a little bit of a risk taker and she lived life to the fullest and good for her but maybe willing to take risks not afraid of things kind of exactly how you would picture her but these are people saying these things that knew her directly and are part of her family and now I'll tell you a little thing that her friend said while she was trying her best to talk about Kylie and keep her composure at the same time. Um, like she was just doing a brief statement, that's it. And she wanted to say something nice about Kylie and she started talking about how she looks up to Kylie. And one of the things she said was, and I quote, and this is the only quote I'm going to take out of the video clip and say at all, Everything else I'm saying is just my thoughts based on other people's statements and what I've learned from evidence and looking at all of this stuff for over a year and a half. Okay, so here is the one quote that Kylie's real friend said that really kind of sets that tone for you. And that is, and I quote, Kylie was a badass end quote so that's it everything else i'm saying from this point on is my thoughts okay and that's i want to be clear about that because i don't want to imply that she said anything else she did say other things but i'm not talking about that i'm just talking about that one quote kylie was a badass okay that's it everything else is my thoughts everything else is I say is based on other people's statements but she said that and then we have David Robertson saying she's not afraid to drive down there or rip around 
and she had her own snowmobile. So obviously in the winter, she was ripping around down there all the time on a snowmobile. And I used to ride snowmobiles. My dad was actually a Polaris snowmobile dealer. So I got to put them together in his shop when we get them out of the box, assemble them and take them for a rip, make them sure they're ready to go. So I got to ride snowmobiles all the time. They're a lot of fun. And that's when I used to live in snow country. One of the reasons I hate snow so much now, done with it. But I know a lot about snowmobiles and snowmobiling. And I know if she was ripping around down there at Prosser Lake, there is some wicked humps and bumps. And I even showed them to you in the Kylie Rodney story chapter one and said, it's kind of hard to believe that she was drunk and didn't know she was driving over these humps and bumps. And what the heck, like, how is that possible? Even if she was drunk, that doesn't make sense that she went the wrong way and got lost on her way home. What? No, that didn't make sense to anybody. And that's why I'm trying to help you make sense of it now. Okay, based on the real Kylie. The Kylie I've gotten to know a little bit by taking statements, hearing statements, reading tons of statements, reading things people said about her that are close to her. For over a year, I've been reading all that stuff for you guys and compiling it in my head. And I have screenshots of some things. I've showed you some just now, David Robertson's statement. Um, I just verbally told you what her real friend said. It's starting to add up to a Kylie Rodney that was a fun person, but lived life on the edge a little bit, was a bit of a risk taker, and that could have been part of what happened, is the fact that she was willing to take risks and do fun, crazy things, like jump her snowmobile over humps and bumps. So it wouldn't be that far out of reach to think that Kylie may have actually driven down to that lake on purpose and went ripping over those humps and bumps maybe to see if she could get a little bit of air with her new car that's all-wheel drive while she's had a couple of drinks in her that's quite possible now if you look at the evidence the police did give everyone already there was some broken glass near the edge of the water okay and there's clearly damage to the car that was unexplained before, like to the side of the car and to the roof of the car. And I pointed out to the back corner of the car. Everyone assumed, well, that's weird. Like, how did she crash into the lake with that kind of damage? Or, and then people said, oh, they did that to the car when they uprighted the car underwater. They must have damaged the roof and the side of the door and all that. Or, there's a possibility, if you look at the bank, because we got you the photos, where Kylie's car was found is quite steep. It's pretty much the only steep part along that whole side of the lake, really. Now, the water was higher at the time when the car entered the water, obviously, because it had been going down the whole month, right? Quickly, actually, because the summer heat and no fresh water coming into the reservoir. So it was being used and also evaporating. So it was going down pretty quickly. Now, when we see the car on the day it was found, it was only 55 feet from the edge. We measured and I showed you the photos from our investigation. It was 10 to 13 feet underwater, closer to 12, I think. We measured everything. So, when the water was a bit higher, the car would have been more like 16, 17 feet underwater. Also, it would have been pitch 
black out there. Pitch black. Now, if Kylie, the Kylie I'm getting to know, the little bit of a rebel Kylie that likes to rip around on snowmobiles and maybe do crazy stuff like jump her car with her friends that she's hanging out with that are a little bit older because she probably hung out with older people because she was skipping a grade and she was a bit more mature for her age and so therefore she probably liked hanging out with slightly older people that had cars and acted a little bit less immature than you know 16 17 year olds so she was hanging out with the 18 20 year old crowd and you know she was now hanging out with Sammy Smith. And again, I'm not implying that anything did or did not happen involving Sammy Smith or anybody lying about things or omitting things. That's not what we're talking about today. We're talking about the fact that it's quite possible that Kylie herself was partying at Boca Rest Campground, where we're pretty sure the real party was. I did a whole video on it. Some of that stuff's in the Kylie Rodney story, Chapter 1. We filmed it all. We talked about exact campsite she was at. All that stuff. We know the FBI was there and collected stuff. Now, that's another thing, too. If they were covering it up, if the FBI was covering it up, they wouldn't spend that kind of money and do that kind of homework. They would just say, yeah, we looked, found nothing. End of story. They wouldn't actually go do this stuff. We know they were calling the water treatment center, try, or the water treatment facility that runs the reservoirs, and trying to get the lake drained before AWP ever showed up. The FBI were trying to look in the lake and ask them to drain it, and they said, we can't. It would flood every home downriver. But they asked, the FBI asked, they don't ask stuff like that if they're not looking for real. They confiscated a dump truck and garbage bags and a whole bunch of stuff from Boca Rest Campground where Kylie was actually staying. They don't do that stuff if they're covering up. They spent a lot of money doing that and they looked into a lot of things. There is no way the FBI was covering anything up. Anybody that believes that is not using their noggin. Okay? They don't do that. They don't spend the money and do those things and actually work hard to find somebody. And the FBI, like I said in another video, the FBI get no recognition. They save missing kids and women from human trafficking and all that stuff every day. They're heroes a lot of the time and they never get any recognition. Sure, there's some shady stuff going on at the presidential level. That's not us. We're talking about a missing girl that ended up in Lake Prosser. Okay, so let's put some things together here. They're staying at Boca Rest Campground. Okay, let's say they've had some drinks. They're partying. Don't forget, Sammy Smith is ripping around in her little red car with no license, no insurance, drinking and driving again after getting a DUI at 15 and probably banned from getting a license till she was 21. And I proved it to you all with facts and evidence in many videos I just recently showed you. In fact, here is the thumbnail for a video I just did a live show and we talked about the whole thing and I showed you guys Sammy Smith's arrest court file numbers and everything I give you guys the good stuff the real stuff okay so we know Sammy Smith was arrested when she was 15 we know she's not allowed to drive her little red car we know she has been driving her little red car we know she shouldn't even have a little red car because her parents know she's not allowed to drive her mom was her lawyer for the court case so we know Sammy was ripping around, and even after Kylie went missing, she was driving the little red car. We have the photo I just showed you guys recently of her putting a sticker, findkylie.com, on her little red car. People are like, she lied about her ride home. Yeah, she did. You're looking at it. That's her ride home. She was driving herself home illegally with her car, with no insurance, no license, drunk, probably, again and already was caught and scolded by a judge at age 15 and told by the judge, you're not allowed to drive until you're 21 and you're gonna do some community service and pay a fine, probably. We don't know she paid the fine, but it's probably. Probably would have been a thousand dollar fine and mommy would have paid that because they're super rich. So, 
Now that you know why Sammy was lying about her ride home, is she telling tales about other things to cover up? Probably. Probably to cover up the fact that whatever happened, she was ripping around in her car, drinking and driving. Or she could have been in the passenger seat of Kylie's car when the incident happened and drinking and driving both of them. And she was the one who fed Kylie the alcohol and on TV gave us all a three-part confession to an involuntary manslaughter charge. Hello. There was possibly covering up because... They didn't want the kids to go to jail for drinking and driving and partying hard. And again, I'm going to make this super, super clear because people get this wrong. They think I'm set in my beliefs and that this is it when I say things. No. I said we're going to look at the other stuff that doesn't line up, and I have a lot of that, later. It makes no sense to talk about that stuff without first reviewing police reports and getting the photos, and I'm going to straight up make them prove one way or the other the seatbelt issue. If it was, what if it was her gym bag? They're out partying in the field. She threw it in the, in the trunk and closed the door on it by mistake and jumped in the car and went for a rip. That's possible. It sure looks like a seatbelt pinched in the door, but until we have the police report on that and the photos... We don't know for sure. So let's wait and find out for sure. Let's get the facts and evidence. If they can prove to me that it's something else and we're all mistaken and it wasn't a seatbelt, next, we move on. If it is a seatbelt pinched in the back hatch door, that needs to be explained further, wouldn't you agree? So don't you want me to get a photo of that strap hanging out the back door after the car was pulled out of the lake? I'm pretty sure everybody watching or even have thought about this case want that answer. So you're going to have to be patient. I'm not going to accuse anybody of having done anything or have lied about anything until we see all the facts and evidence. And I'm working on getting it for you. I've already got you some. I got you information about why they weren't wearing body cams. And they proved it with facts and evidence for me. And I showed it to you. And I'm going to get more. The seatbelt issue will be answered in the next month or so. However long it takes them to give me what I ask for. And I need all of you to be super supportive like we were doing with Placer County Sheriff's Office. Because your help and support showed them that we're doing a positive thing. Trying to get the story straight for the people that are getting brainwashed by the crazies out there and we're trying to respect the families and the police departments that have no choice but to protect themselves and the families from the people riding the crazy train and drinking the kool-aid okay we can't have that we can't have that they will not talk to youtubers or anybody doing documentaries when there's crazy stuff going on all of a sudden again and everybody's eating it up and talking about these people that had nothing to do with anything and conspiracy theories you know how much i hate that phrase made up stories that's what we call it here all right the made up stories interfere with truth and the more you gobble them up on other people's channels the more horse crap gets fed to you and it goes in circles it's like the telephone game and it will be another year and a half and you'll be going why does it still not make sense okay kylie was a risk taker is what i'm getting she liked to possibly party hard she liked to live life to the edge if anybody was going to jump a snowmobile over a ramp and try to get the most air it's going to be kylie rodney apparently okay so if they were partying at Boca Rest Campground, and maybe this for any reason they decided let's go down to the Prosser Lake area, down to the sanctuary or down to the actual lake, maybe they were going to go down there to smoke one. Maybe they were going to go down there to crack a few more beers. Maybe they were planning to rip down there and go over the humps and bumps in Kylie's all-wheel drive car on purpose 
for fun because that's what 17 and 18 year olds do heck i still do stuff like that it's fun i go off-roading and stuff it's fun okay so maybe she was thinking after having a few drinks hey i've got an all-wheel drive car and she's not afraid to rip it apparently on anything so maybe she decided to go down there on her own free will maybe she decided to go down there fast over those humps and bumps maybe sammy and other people were in their cars following maybe kylie was on that very steep bank where it goes down to the water's edge there and she hooked it and rolled the car because it's an all-wheel drive car so the front wheels pull pretty hard and if you're in soft sandy kind of material while you're driving and you're on a bank on a sharp angle and you hook it uphill to get away from the water she could have very well barrel rolled that car which would explain the broken glass the damage to the car's roof and side and how the car ended up upside down out there in the water She might have already been injured. She might have been just in shock and trapped. You know, airbags and stuff going off. And here's what people haven't thought about. It was late at night. If the car crashed into the water and the headlights went under, whether it was upside down or upside up, there's no light anymore. Okay, the, the light would have been very foggy in front of the car. It wouldn't have helped her be able to see. And the car would have been tipped downward with the motor and the headlights facing down as it was going down. So if she was able to get her seatbelt off, even after possibly being injured, and couldn't get a breath, because, hey, even if you're a good swimmer, like 30 seconds underwater is a heck of a long time to hold your breath, okay? So in a matter of seconds, she would have needed another breath. So with the car facing the way it was and her window and door not opening, maybe instead of going out the passenger side, she stuck her head up into the only open area, which would have been the back of the car. And maybe she tried to get some air. And again, she might have been intoxicated. All right. We were told by people she was drunk as a skunk. She might have been really confused after getting barrel rolled and then thrown into pitch black water and sinking fast. Upside down, maybe even. Things get ugly quick in those situations. And she could have had a head injury. She could have been trapped. She could have tried to get up into the backs to get, to get a breath before she tried to swim out. Those are things that are possible. She might have been unconscious even. And the dry drowning thing, that is real. I looked into it and did some research and homework on that too. And it turns out it's really, really, really common especially when people are trapped in a vehicle or a boat and they're going under and they're gasping and they get some water splashed in their lungs. The
the body senses that you're drowning and has the ability to close your lungs off because the human body is amazing and it can react to things that you don't even understand like sneezing you can't control that when it's coming out it's coming out there are some ways to kind of trigger it to stop but you know what i'm talking about the body does things sometimes that you really can't control and dry drowning is one of those things where you can't control it your lungs decide on their own you're better off with no air than you are with water in your lungs because if you get to the side of the river or wherever you're trying to swim out of and you've got no air in your lungs you can gasp and get air in your lungs pretty quick and you'll be okay if you get to the side of the river bank and your lungs are full of water you're pretty much dead there's no breathing anymore so your body knows that out of the two scenarios getting water in the lungs or just shutting them off so that air and water can't get in or out the the second is the better choice so the body is capable of creating that situation where somebody dry drowns and their lungs actually close up and i know that can happen because i don't have asthma anymore but the first half of my life or more i had extremely bad asthma and that's what would happen to my lungs in the middle of the day for no reason not no water involved my lungs would just dry drown they would just close off and that's what dry drowning is it's basically like a huge asthma attack i have had asthma attacks where i could not breathe and had to go to the hospital and almost died when i was younger it can happen in the middle of the day for somebody that has asthma so anybody that has asthma will tell you that it is very possible and plausible for your lungs to close off by themselves <laughs> anybody that has asthma is living proof that it can even happen without water present now from all the ones i looked at it looked like more than half the time people end up being found in a car or a boat that's gone under or somehow trapped in something that went underwater and got water in their mouth their lungs closed off and they dry drown they actually suffocated rather than getting water directly in their lungs so now that you know those facts it is quite possible that kylie was ripping over those humps and bumps being a bit of a rebel and having some fun after she was drinking and we all know that's not a good idea but when you're 17 you make those mistakes and it sounds to me from what I've been hearing from statements and other people talking about her and reading a lot of statements. Kylie was that kind of girl. She would launch her snowmobile. She wasn't afraid to do anything. She was living life on the edge. So if she decided with some friends to go ripping down there, it is possible that she hooked it a little hard going full throttle and barrel rolled the car into the lake and was seriously injured in the process and may have dry drowned sammy and these other people ripping around in their cars may have been confused about where she went and that could explain why they were driving up and down the hill looking for the car like where did she go she was ahead of us how did she disappear maybe they thought kylie was playing some sort of game with them and they were like, where did she go? Where did she go? And hey, I'm not saying I know anything about what happened in that situation. I'm just saying that that is totally possible. It would explain everything. It would explain the broken glass and the weird skid mark that they were talking about. And we showed you some photos of the bank and stuff and how steep it is there. It is possible for an all-wheel drive car to suddenly turn the wheels and pull the front of the car up the hill and force it into a barrel roll situation and anybody that doesn't have a whole lot of experience with off-road four-wheel drive vehicles could make that mistake easily and 
don't forget, Kylie just got the car, if it was indeed her car. But she was down there all the time ripping around on her snowmobile, and we know this because her grandfather told us so. She was down there all the time, not afraid to rip around down there. She knew the area, and she had her own snowmobile. All right, so that's not my only theory. I got a couple others, but we can't talk about them because that would be throwing ridiculous speculation around with nothing to back it up. And there's already kind of some people doing that on the internet. So we'll focus on facts and stay away from the fiction on my channel. Okay, so we're not going to talk about this stuff that goes against that theory I just said right now because right now it kind of seems like maybe they're protecting these kids from getting in trouble drinking and driving but it is quite possible and almost very likely that Kylie Rodney decided to go ripping down there on her own free accord because she liked to do that sort of thing and which would explain how she got over those humps and bumps without knowing it because she did know it she was maybe even trying to catch some air who knows okay that's what 17 year olds do and if you see her friends at that other party remember they had all the cars and stuff and they had a pickup truck that was stuck in the mud and they like to rip around in their cars and hey i went to those same kind of parties when i was a kid i did we had giant field parties at the last day of high school and stuff giant parties nothing bad ever happened it was all good fun but that's what kids do at that age and to think that Kylie who clearly liked to live on the edge and was a bit of a rebel and was a risk taker from what I'm getting the Kylie I'm getting to know the idea that she decided to go from Boca down to Prosser Lake with a few friends tailing in another car and heck who knows maybe she had somebody in the passenger seat it could have been Sammy we don't know but I think probably Sammy was following her little red car because people said they saw a couple cars going up and down. And it's like, well, maybe they were looking for her after she barrel rolled it into the lake and they didn't know what, where she went. And when, by the time they figured it out, it was too late. Because you can drown with or without water in your lungs in under a minute. And if you barrel roll a car into the lake and get injured and you're now in the pitch black water and you don't know what just happened because you're drunk and you're confused and un in shock and you're drowning already and you don't even know which way's up because it's pitch black and you just know that you found what you feel like is up which is straight up to the surface of the back of the car where she could have caught a breath for a second maybe and that's if she was conscious and i'm just saying that's an option but what we really got to do is stop thinking about what happened until we get all the facts from the police all right but they already did give us some things publicly they told us you know there was some glass there was a skid mark the car was over here We need to ask the questions about why they couldn't see the car or find it on their own later. We need to address another thing that I'm going to bring up later, some evidence. I don't know if we could call it evidence. I guess we'll call it a lead. I have a lead that I've been sitting on for a year that I'm going to need your help with because it was somebody that had made a post on Facebook and I'm going to need you all to help me track that person down. Because when I got the screenshot handed to me, it was given to me by somebody else that was given by somebody else. And the original person had redacted both the name of the poster and the person who replied. And what they said needs to be investigated at least. And it may even tie into other people's stories like Nick Giovanni's story. I'm just saying, we can't look at any of that stuff or make any crazy wild accusations until we ask for all the information and we do it the right way and stop accusing people of stuff 
and start to understand that Kylie's family did love her. They did care for her. They gave her the best of everything. She wasn't neglected. She was a fun person who had fun with her friends. She didn't hate her life. She loved snowmobiling, apparently, and being a bit of a risk taker and a rebel. And it's kind of exactly how you would picture her, right? So that's what I'm getting. And it kind of seems like there's maybe a chance that Kylie was trying to show off a little bit, rip her four-wheel drive car around, maybe try to get some air off those humps and bumps. And maybe they were just going down there to smoke one or crack a few beers on their own away from the party. I don't know that part yet. None of us are going to get to know any of these things until I interview the Rodney family and maybe Kylie's real friend if she's up for it and that's gonna take a lot of rapport building and work that I'm already doing and you already see me doing it I've shown you guys the receipts the evidence and everything and when people come to me and say show me the receipts or whatever I did I've been doing it for a year and a half I have so many things in my videos. So there you go, folks. A possible and plausible explanation as to how Kylie may have driven into the lake. And it kind of fits the Kylie I've gotten to know by reading all these statements and listening to people that know her and her friend. So, that's it, folks. There is a chance that she drove into the lake and dry drowned. And I'm not saying that is what happened. And I'm not saying that isn't what happened. What I'm saying is, all the other stuff that doesn't add up needs to be addressed a different way with a different approach. And you have to be able to work the long game because there's no way... You're ever going to get the truth without those interviews and statements and police reports and photos. And I want a photo from the police showing us what is that strap hanging out the back of the car. There's only three options. We covered them in many of my videos. A, it is a seatbelt pinched in the door holding Kylie's body in place. And somebody did that on purpose, which means there's foul play. B. Option B, Adventures with Purpose, Jared Lysak, Doug Bishop, Nick Wren, those guys faked that scene because maybe the FBI and the family wouldn't allow them to film it. And maybe Jared insisted on having that scene for his money shot in his 5 million view, multi-million dollar video. Is it a stretch to think that Kylie's family saw what they were doing way before us and that's why they said... AWP are nothing but clout chasers and don't deserve the, the reward money? Is, that, is it possible why Jagger Westfall was saying that stuff about them and Ryan Upchurch? It's very possible. Very likely. Jagger doesn't seem like a dumb kid to me, and I feel really bad for the dude. He got railed by these people while he was clearly suffering, because it's pretty obvious whether he got dumped by Kylie or not, he really loved her. He had a big heart for her, and the poor guy's got to deal with that while he's getting roasted on the internet and called a murderer and a liar, and, you know, somehow he's involved in what happened to her. And I'm not saying that the kids didn't lie about stuff and maybe even tried to hide things from their parents and the police for a little bit, and then when the police figured out that they had lied to them to cover up their drinking and driving and partying, well then, now what? Now you got a bunch of kids involved in this thing from prominent families in the community, and there's nothing they can do to bring Kylie back. So, is it a stretch that they lied to protect these kids from getting in trouble because they made stupid mistakes? And maybe their stupid mistakes didn't directly even cause what happened to Kylie. Except for maybe Sammy Smith's three-part confession to feeding Kylie alcohol. 
is that what they're trying to, you know, make go away because of her family? So maybe there's a relationship there that they don't want to damage and they figure there's nothing we can do. Maybe people like Lindsay Neiman and stuff know the full story and know that the kids were drinking and driving and partying with Kylie. And maybe she's decided to let that go and not ruin the other kids' lives that grew up around Kylie because Kylie's gone. Just like I won't, I won't give up Kylie's friend's name and face to the people on the internet that want to exploit her for views and will ruin her life and she'll get harassed. Her face would be on every channel all over the internet and people would be saying crazy things about her and accusing her of things and trying to get interviews out of her. And that's why people like the police have a job to do and protect people from the super crazies out there on the internet. So that's a very possible and plausible explanation for what happened to Kylie and how she ended up in the lake and why they said she drove into the lake and drowned because there is a chance she drove into the lake and drowned and that she was a risk taker and a bit of a rebel living on the edge. Maybe she was trying to jump her car and get some air and rip around down there and maybe she made a bad move on that really steep bank right where it goes to the water there and rolled her car at full speed and maybe she was drunk and in shock and in the pitch black water you don't have a lot of time and like I said dry drowning is a real thing your lungs just close off and that's it you don't get to breathe anymore and when you're panicking and you don't know which way's up and it's dark and you're drowning and you're drunk that's a bad bad situation so I hope we can maybe get things clarified by working with law enforcement and getting all the police reports photos videos that we need to prove things one way or the other like the seatbelt issue you know I'm working on it you know I'm gonna get you the answer and you know I'm not gonna take no for an answer so that's it for today, folks. Thank you so much for hanging out with me and listening to this theory that is only one theory of several possible theories, but one that makes a lot more sense and is a little bit more down to earth. And we don't need to be accusing anybody of anything at this point. A lot of people were saying Sammy Smith did something because she was lying about her ride home, but I already proved it to you with documents and evidence that it it was something else. She lied about her ride home because she drove herself home. Okay, so I'm going to leave it here. And if you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, do that right now. Make sure you set the notification bell to all so you get my next video update. And I'll see all of you in the next video.
the puzzle that you left behind. Oh, I think you're gonna find oh, when you look down, you'll shine. Oh, and you have birthday 17 among the stars. Seventeen among the stars